Hi, I'm Scotty from Scotty's Clock World. Thanks for joining me back on my channel. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to look at creating a thumbnail for your video that will catch the viewer's eye and entice them to view your video. So let's get started. This is the first in a new series entitled Helping to Create a New Clock Repair Channel. This series is designed to help new clock repairers start off on the right foot when setting up their YouTube clock repair channel. All these videos will be based on results from testing and observations that I've carried out on my channel since mid-2018. Each video will discuss a topic that I have proven to work for my clock repair channel since that date. The information I will be discussing will not apply to general YouTube channels, but it will only work on clock repair channels specifically. Observing and understanding the data from your channel that YouTube channel analytics collects and displays is very important in improving a channel and its growth. Just uploading any old video will not help your sub count or more importantly your viewer watch time and retention rate. Both of the latter two are very important to the YouTube algorithm as it compiles data for the suggested video list which is a great way to get your content in front of viewers. Use your analytics data to analyze your channel's progress. See who's watching and for how long find out their geographical location, do they click on end screen video links or playlist links, find out your most popular videos and those video subjects that are bombed, experiment with new ideas but track the results so you know if they're working for you or not. If the video was well received then make more videos on that theme. If the video bombed, was it because of a poor thumbnail or title or description? Or did the video have poor quality content, lighting or dialogue? Once you become monetized, these things will greatly assist you to grow your channel because you will have a feel of what works and what doesn't work for you. I watch each of Roberta Blake's podcasts. His knowledge and understanding of channel growth is absolutely first rate. You could do a lot worse than follow that suggestion. Overall, it will probably take you a couple of years to hit 1,000 subs. The 4,000 watch hours will come sooner. It took me three years for my first 1,000 subs, and then the next two years I gained 2,500 subs. It's a hard struggle at first because you're not known, and you're still learning what works and what doesn't work, but if you hang in there and upload regularly, whether it be weekly or fortnightly or whatever, you will come out on top in time. Here are some general suggestions for your channel. Be consistent with your uploads so viewers know when to expect a new video, whether it be once a week or once a fortnight. Check your analytics to find out when your greatest number of viewers are online and preferably upload your videos at these times. It will not guarantee you views, but it makes sense to upload when the majority of your viewers are online. I schedule all my uploads according to this data and it definitely helps me with views and viewer watch time. It's a good idea not to use long intros on your videos as they don't deliver value to the viewer. If you do use them, max them out at about 3 to 5 seconds. You only have 8 seconds after the ads to hook the viewer to continue viewing your video. Don't ask for subs, likes, etc at the beginning of the video because there's no value in it for the viewer and you have not yet demonstrated to the viewer that your content is worthwhile watching. Don't say thanks for watching at the end of your videos. This signals to the viewer that it's the end and the viewer will most likely probably leave your channel and not click on a link to another of your videos. This negatively affects your retention rate. It is best to be aware that the generalizations pushed for channel growth by most YouTube people do not work for clock repair channels. Clock repair channels are completely different from entertainment channels. Also, the information given is only an opinion and not factually based. Many of these channels claim to know how the YouTube algorithm works. However, nobody outside the YouTube software engineers know that. Everything else is only a guest opinion, at best. Clock repair channels are a very deep niche. There are not many people interested in our niche, but viewers are loyal 
and will return regularly. We are not general entertainment channels. A little bit about me. I started Adobe Photoshop and Premiere training in 1995 at the Institute of Technology. When Photoshop became extremely expensive, I changed over to GIMP and have been using it for about six years now. I built many websites starting with HTML2 in the late 90s when the only browser was Netscape Navigator, which was only available for download in Australia from the University of South Australia. Who remembers that horrible scrolling text that appeared on the bottom of heaps of websites at that time? We wrote JavaScript, Perl and other small languages that integrated with HTML, many of which are no longer in use. I still write C++ for Arduino projects. This video will focus on the first thing a viewer sees even before he or she visits your channel, the thumbnail. Here are some thoughts on this subject. Don't rely on using YouTube suggested thumbs when you upload a video. YouTube will offer you some suggestions for each video every time you upload. I don't use them as they don't have any text on them explaining what the video is about. You can use a snapshot from your video editing program if necessary, but make sure the frame you choose is stationary and clear. Don't use a transition frame as it will be blurry. The picture on your thumb must be clear, preferably shot with a camera or phone if necessary, and must be accurate to the video content. Using clickbait thumbs or descriptions will adversely affect your channel when you become monetized. There are many free graphic programs online. Download and learn how to use one of them. Then manipulate your photo, enhance the color, change the saturation, check out your light levels, add text, zoom in or out to create an effect. The use of your face is not necessary, especially the fake emotion ones that you see everywhere on YouTube. Your content is not about you. You are not supposed to be looking for validation. It's the product that's important. Clock repair, education or learning. Build up your brand, create a graphic that is easily recognized and use it on every thumb. Use color on your thumbnails, a single one every time or change the color with every thumbnail that you produce. Even use a different gradient sometimes. Use text on your thumbs, a maximum of four words, a large plain font so it's easy to read, and use contrasting colors. After you've done your thumbnail, test it on thumbsup.tv to see how the thumb will look across a wide variety of devices. These are two examples of my thumbs being tested at thumbsup.tv. In the first example, you can see that YouTube adds a video duration over part of the text on my thumbnail, making it hard for viewers to work out which video they're watching. In this example, by moving the text to the other side of the thumb, allows the viewer to see the complete text that I have written. Thumbs 3, 4 and 5 show the graphics I use as my branding logo. It has evolved over time but still retains a picture of me working on a clock movement. I had been using the same thumbnail template for quite some time so when I radically changed my thumbnail template I retained my branding logo but made it larger so viewers could still see that I was the creator of the video. I use only four or five words in a large plain style font to convey the contents of the video. Use contrasting colors to lift the text off the page and make it easy to read. The image on the thumbnail gives the viewer additional information about the video. This pic shows the thumbnail that YouTube suggested while I uploaded the video and on the right hand side is the thumbnail that I created and used. You can see there's quite a dramatic difference one to the other. This is an older thumbnail where I added text over the top of the image, but the text was not very easy to read. This thumbnail has fewer words in a larger font size and is easier to read than the previous example. This thumbnail has way too much text on it and as a result it is quite hard to read. 
This is a template I've used for quite some time until I changed it recently. The text is quite easily read. The picture of the clock parts gives a lot of information to the viewer, but part of the information I was sharing, the fact that it was part two of the service video, was covered by YouTube's video duration information. This is my current thumbnail template. Large text, my branding logo predominantly displayed. The solid background is the color I used on the right hand side of my previous template. Returning viewers would recognize the background color and my branding logo and know that the video was a Scottish Clock World creation. 